you don't know that Kumo D was in Treacherous Three, really, I, I don't want him to be there. And it's nothing, it's nothing, you know, How I went through this listening yesterday. I, you know, I asked them in the studio, okay, what group was Kumo D in? Everybody looked at me, but I, I don't, I, I'm not really sure if I need you to be there. But how will I be able to learn? You're right, you're right. So that's why, you know what, I got the I'm master, I got the master in here. I'm going to get Kumo D. Thank you. How do Lydia. I explain to a youngster like this, so oh. naive in hip hop, don't know who some of the founding fathers of this thing is, I can don't, understand, that. don't understand yeah. why we able to have a hip hop radio station and work for these kind of format radio let, um, cool stations. You got a good point right there to take cool. Okay. You like it. He, he did, okay. That was good, everything he said. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you got a pioneer right here. How do I explain to a youngster all this? Well, basically, it, it's two major key eras hip-hop that in my opinion set the foundation one is the renaissance era and that's before we actually had records because sugar hill gang was the first rap record so to speak right and um, before that it was definitely grandmaster flash and uh cold crush brothers it was a lot of brothers on the street and by the time when, Sh when the sugar hill gang actually did rapper's delight we thought it was passe to be honest we were like oh man a hip-hop a hippie hip we weren't rhyming like that <laughs> for five years at that point but the, it didn't make a difference because the rest of the country loved it and what we didn't realize was that was actually setting the tone to really give us a career mm -hmm. because before that it was just something that we were doing because we loved it and in that era the, that first wave of rap records i was in a group called treacherous three uh we did the uh, i created that that fast style which is so crazy because people rhyme a lot faster now than they ever did before mm -hmm. but i basically started that you know super scuba party people man with those super <laughs> with just the regular take you know i was doing yeah. that kind of style and yeah, um the, the second <laughs> <laughs> which is natural which is natural. Natural. Okay, <laughs> you know, right. And the, uh, the second wave that I think that really, really laid the foundation um, was what I call the golden era. And that's like from 86 to 90. And that's where it was really, really diverse. You yes, it was. Heavy D, the Big Daddy Kane. You had Queen Latifah. You know, the ladies started getting into the equation. MC Light, Salt and Pepper was holding it down. Uh, you what had, happened, Cool? I'm gonna stop you right there. What happened? What happened to the you ladies? The golden the era. Rappers. You could. Everybody had. You had Public Enemy. You had those right. that were Ooh. the fun rappers that did fun. You had Absolutely. the other kid and play. Yeah, you, mm -hmm. you had the other cats like that were serious and socially conscious. Here it is. You know, you, you Public Enemy. We had. You know, you had the, the love rappers. <laughs> well, they weren't flavor of love. We had everything. Man. What right. happened, in your opinion, to the whole thing? You said the key name. The key name is Public Enemy, and I think what happened is. They started to see, because Public Enemy, a lot of people don't remember, didn't get a lot of airplay when they first came out because of their pro-black stance. Mm -hmm. And without airplay, they were still selling platinum records. And they became a phenomenon that nobody expected. You couldn't see that one coming out of nowhere. So the fun rap was one thing. The narcissistic, braggadocious rap was another thing. Mm -hmm. The ladies love rap was another thing. And all of that, they had all these zones. And when the political black power rap came, that's where, in my opinion, corporate America was like, uh-oh, he's saying all this stuff about the government. And he's talking about black people uniting. Mm, we're not gonna really be spending a lot of money making that happen. <laughs> simultaneously, oh, wow. simultaneously, and I tell people a lot of time, this is the, the origins of the East Coast, West Coast battle was a political one. It wasn't a, a hip hop thing. Mm -hmm. We thought that gangster rap was gonna be counterproductive for where we were actually getting ready to go based on what Public Enemy did. And it didn't mean we didn't like them because we love Snoop. I mean, he came later, of course, right, right, but right. the NWA thing, right. They started using gangster rap and and promoting it and making it bigger because nothing was on the radio at that time, if we don't talk about payola. Nothing was on the radio at that time <laughs> in particular without some form of, of payment happening. Mm -hmm. So they started backing gangster rap and making it the more prominent rap. So you went from not playing hip hop mm -hmm. to playing hip hop with the most profane, most profanity and just bleeping the words out. So they went from zero to a hundred. Like you are not only playing the rap that you wouldn't have played before, you're playing rap that has profanity in it that you're editing to make sure that you keep this record on and keep the videos on. And I think from that point on, it got to a point where uh, the gangster rap was being viewed and victimized because it was a double standard, I, which I didn't like because the guys were telling truth, they were telling their story. But the point was we had no diversity at that point. Mm -hmm. And when you got to no diversity and all of the next wave of rappers that started following, and it wasn't just that, you started seeing gangs popping up in little small town hick towns that didn't have anything to do with gang violence, mm -hmm. but they were following the imagery. And then gangster rap became the whipping boy for everything that's wrong in America, which made hip hop take a bigger weight than it had to at the time. And at that point, the diversity just left. The, uh, it became completely political. And what started getting airplay was they started selling images as opposed to the music.